These Texas books are definitely not placed there to make up for the lack of pretty bookshelf in the background of my videos. I always have a random stack of books on my couch. I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, <laughs> hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about changing your mind about the books that you read because I have quite often. I'm very aware of the fact that, you know, my opinion on books can change over time, but the video in which I talked about that book, like one or two years ago, it's gonna be up on the internet forever and people can still watch that now. So I wanted to make a video talking about all the books that I changed my mind on. So either I now have a more positive opinion on them when I used to be a little more negative, or I actually have a more negative opinion on them now after some thought. I've seen over the years other booktubers make videos like this and I really like the idea. It's okay to look back and think, oh, I miss things or I've changed my mind. So for all of these books, I will explain what my previous opinion on it was and what has changed now. I don't have any jokes today. Ooh, it's sunny. First, I want to talk about An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. Imagine this, okay? I bought this book in a bookstore because a friend of mine absolutely adored it and it was only five euros. So I bought it and then I never read it until I was going on holiday to Poland, which meant that I had to go on a more or less 16 hour train ride. So I thought, you know what? I'm finally gonna be taking this book with me. And I read the first half on the train ride to Poland. And I read the second half on the train ride back to Poland. So I spent a lot of time subsequently in this book. And then the first time I read it, I was kind of neutral on this. There's two perspectives in this one. Elias, who is this like soldier who kind of wants to desert. I really like that perspective. And then we have Leia, who is kind of your general rebel girl perspective that you often see in the Starpian. Although I liked Elias's part, I didn't really like Leia's part. And so I kind of met in the middle and gave it three stars. But the thing is, the character of Elias has stuck with me so much. This is the only book where I've read a love triangle that genuinely like pains me and adds so much to the story. The internal struggles that Elias goes through when he has to decide whether he wants to desert or stay in, in, in the army is so good. He remains one of my favorite characters. And I have to give this book credit for being pretty good. Like, it's a pretty good book. <laughs> Even though the story of Leia is one that we've seen quite often, it was still very well executed. Maybe I'll even continue the series one day, but I won't promise that. Next up, we have a series that I chose to use as a prop for my background, so I didn't think about that. But it is none other than the Grisha trilogy by Lee Verdugo. I both have a more positive and a more negative opinion on this book now, if that makes sense. I read this when I was 17, so when I read these, I gave these all four stars, which is very positive, even though there were a lot of things about these books that I was actually extremely frustrated by. Like when I think back now, especially the second book in the series, frustrated the hell out of me to the point that I don't really understand why I gave them all four stars back in the day. But because I had absolutely no experience with fantasy, high fantasy whatsoever, I still gave them all four stars. I think I gave the last one five stars. Looking back, I can definitely see that these books were definitely not masterpieces, but I have grown more fond of them because they were my very first high fantasy. Ooh, the sun is peeking out there. So in essence, I can look back and say that these books really were not the height of of writing or fantasy or anything, but I've just grown a lot more fond of them and I have very nostalgic feelings towards them now. And now they can go back to being props. <laughs> Next up we have The Hating Game. This is a hate to love romance that I gave three stars mostly because I really liked the hate to love romance, but I thought that they kind of fell in love with each other way too 
early into the story but the thing is I constantly feel craving to reread this book which I can't do because I got it from the library and I think that's a sign that I need to give it a little bit more credit that I actually did really enjoy this book even though yes mostly the first half is great the first half was honestly so great <laughs> that i think i just need to give it a little bit more credit instead of a three stars i would definitely say it's more like a three and a half not quite four stars but i just want to reiterate that i thought this book was actually really a lot of fun just not quite there then we have a golden oldie <laughs> and that is the Eon duology by Alison Goodman. I recently saw on Goodreads that I gave both of these books five stars and I remember reading them and being absolutely just enthralled by them and having so much fun but the thing is I remember nothing about these books. I don't think you ever really hear me talking about these books on my channel um, so that's usually a sign I probably shouldn't be giving these books five stars. <laughs> you know, sometimes a book is really great in the moment, but if I notice over time that a book doesn't stick with me at all, that usually leads to me not being as fond of the book anymore. And that's kind of what I have with the Eon duology. Even though I would still highly recommend this series, it was a lot of fun. I don't think it really deserves to be one of the few books that I ever gave five stars but I should probably say these lean more to four four and a half stars. Next up we have The Bear and the Nightingale the first book in the Winter Night trilogy so you may remember that a year ago I picked up this book because I thought it would be exactly my thing Russian folklore fantasy and I couldn't really get through it I had a really hard time but I couldn't find why I didn't like it I didn't really find any flaws in the story, I just, it just really didn't connect with me. So I did end up giving it three stars, which is a positive rating for me, it means I liked it. And I just couldn't, like, logically give it any lower because I was like, well, I can't find anything that's wrong with this book. I'm just not enjoying it. It's only until later that I read, try to read the sequel, The Girl in the Tower, and I also couldn't get through it and I ended up doing nothing it, that I just think I have to admit to myself that this book just wasn't for me. I only thought The Baron and the Nightingale was just okay, which would mean a two star rating for me, and I really don't have to give a book a three star rating, which is a positive rating, even though I didn't really enjoy it just because I can't find a good reason for why I didn't enjoy it. I do know now that the reason I didn't enjoy it was because it's just not really my type of story. It's very plot based, very story based, and that just doesn't really do it for me. So I think I'm gonna lower the rating to two stars. That doesn't mean that I think the book is bad or anything, but it is the best reflection of my personal enjoyment of the book. Then another one, let me get it from the bookshelves, is The Priory of the Orange Tree. This book, I think I ended up giving it three stars or two and a half stars because I had a really, really hard time getting through it and I never really super connected to anything in the story or the characters, but kind of the opposite happened to the Eon duology. In the Eon duology I really liked it, but then over time I just very quickly forgot everything. I noticed that with the Prior of the Orange Tree, I still remember the world building, I still remember all these characters, I still remember all the folklore and the myths in this book. Could also be because I follow the author on Twitter and she often tweets about it, but I, I think it's just because the world building in this book is so good that this world still lives in my mind and that is a really good sign because I usually immediately forget everything about books that I read. <laughs> so I feel like I need to give this book a little bit more credit for how well it crafted this entire world in one book. Like this is a standalone. It's just one book, 800 pages, and it's an entire story with all the world building done, all the characters introduced, and that, I think, deserves some praise. Then I want to briefly talk about Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. Oh my gosh. Do you ever just take a book from your shelf that you haven't read in years and hold it in your hand and just like... Memories. Just get hit by memories. Wow. Oh, <laughs> I have the dust jacket on the wrong way. Why did I do that? 
I know this book gets a lot of hate on booktube. Uh, I loved, I just want to say that I loved this book. I gave it five stars. I had so, so much fun reading this book. Yes, it has a lot of cliches, but I still think they were all executed very well to the point that I just couldn't help myself but absolutely adore every single page of this story. I'm still really glad that I read it, but <laughs> I don't think it like really deserves to be one of the few books that I gave five stars. Oh yes, if you go onto my Goodreads you can see that I gave this book five stars, but I just want to say that this is definitely not one of my favorite books of all time. This book is definitely not better than other books that I've rated four stars. I just had a lot of fun reading this and that's what I wanted to say. And then the last one that I just want to put a little, little caveat to and that is Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. I gave this five stars and I still want to give it five stars. I just know that my opinion kind of on this book has like slightly changed because if you don't know this is a non-fiction book. It's called A Short History of Humankind because the author is a historian and it's like this history of humanity and everything that humans have made and done since the beginning of Homo sapiens. Super interesting, still highly recommend it. It's just that when I first read this, it was one of the first nonfiction books that I read. So I just kind of assumed that everything that was <laughs> told in here was just true facts, just like completely true facts, real things. Until I later realized that a lot of the things in this book are just the author's own theories. Obviously there are other scientists that might agree or disagree and there might also be other theories on things that I remember just one time that I was like looking up one of the theories that he talks about in his book and I wanted to learn more about it so I started googling it only to realize that it doesn't exist <laughs> and that it's only his theory. Again I still love it, I still think his, th his theories are super interesting and very much worth learning about. It's just good to realize for me and I think for anyone who picks up these kinds of books that of course there's still just one person's, one scientist's theory and sometimes there are also other theories that you might not know about because you're only reading the work of one person. <laughs> anyway, question to you. I read Sapiens, I read his other book Homo Deus. Would you guys recommend his third book Lessons for the 21st Century? Because I'm still debating on whether I want to read that one or not. So let me know if you would recommend that book. Okay, well that was it already. <laughs> Those were the books that I kind of changed my mind on. I just want to mention you can follow me on social media if you want. It's still possible to like the video and subscribe to my channel, so I'm gonna say that here as well. Let me know if there are books that you change your mind on over time. I think it would be fun to kind of reflect on that, you know, what happens when you change your opinion on books. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon in another one. Goodbye!